All right, I gotta start this off by admitting that I lied. Hey, what's up, I'm Jason, and today I wanna to talk to you about the differences between using a framework and an engine in your game development process. Now, this video is really targeted for people who are considering getting into game development or programming, or maybe programmers who are already in the field and already doing a little bit of development, and just kind of curious if they made the right choice or what the other options are. The inspiration for this video actually came from a post I saw in the game dev subreddit. So I just kind of want to read this through to you. And it says, using a game framework instead of an engine. Or that's the title. It's a question here. It says, some context. I was just browsing through my YouTube feed when I found a video talking about game frameworks and why they aren't using a game engine. I'd have heard of frameworks such as Love 2D and Pi Game, but had never really paid much attention to them. But as I watched this video, I was thinking about how this was a good idea for me too. Some more context. I'm a 13 year old programmer and my main inspiration for programming was game development. And that's part of what caught my eye. What 13 year old programmer asking this question. It says, I decided to go down the Unity route and thought it was the best thing. But after that video, I'm not sure it is anymore. My main goal was to learn as much programming and gain as much programming experience as possible pursuing game development. To all of you more experienced programmers out there, should I use a framework or an engine? And if a framework, which framework should I use? So that's what we'll talk about today. I'll share what I did, what I wish I had done, and what you might want to do for yourself. But before we get started, this video is sponsored by Millinote. Millinote's a tool for organizing your creative projects into freeform visual boards. I've been using Millinote for all of my projects for a while now, and it's really become part of my everyday workflow. It can be used for all different types of creative projects, but I find that it's extremely well suited for the early messy stages of a new project, especially in game development and design. With Millinote, you can add text, images, video, code snippets, and even create full task boards to manage your progress. And they have a ton of different templates to lay everything out so you can get started on your next project right away. Millinote's really easy to use, and they have a great mobile app that makes it so I never miss a great idea no matter where I am. Personally, I add things on my phone in bed all the time. The most amazing thing about Millinote is that they're offering a completely free plan with no time limit. Whether you're planning a small 2D platformer or a complex RPG, it's extremely important to keep track of your ideas, vision, and your progress. So I definitely recommend you check out Millinote's free offer by simply clicking the link in the description. All right, I got to start this off by admitting that I lied the last time I talked about this. I think it was during one of our last game dev show episodes. If you haven't seen that, check it out, by the way. But I talked about how when I started game development or when I started getting into computers and programming, that game engines just didn't really exist. And you had to start by typing everything out and kind of learning from scratch, writing all of the very basics. There weren't even really any frameworks available. It wasn't like you could just go write something to make something render on screen. That wasn't completely true. <laughs> I'd forgotten about Gary Kitchen's Game Maker, which was actually a really cool engine that I used when I was, I guess, like nine or 10 years old. It was really handy for making fun games and kind of opened up my eyes to the ability or the things that I was actually going to be able to do in the future. Now, of course, since I was a little kid at the time and barely knew what I was doing, most of what I did was just working with the examples that were built in there and then making minor changes, seeing how things would adjust, and then slowly trying to add my own little tweaks and adjustments to stuff. And this was a lot more exciting and inspiring than when I would write some regular old basic code on a Commodore 64. That's what you'd write, some basic code. I'd be writing little text adventures. That was one of my favorites, copying like text adventure books or choose your own adventure books and turning them into code or simple little math problems like, hey, what's seven times seven? And then getting my sister to try it out who was much younger and laughing, haha, she can't figure out this math problem. Uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun, but not as fun as actually putting in graphics and building out something that I could share and really get people into it and share with my friends, which is what Game Maker kind of allowed me to do. Of course, things have changed dramatically since then. Over the last 25 years, there have been a number of frameworks and game engines that have become available. I know that one of the first ones I used was Torque Game Engine, which was really cool and fun to use 
because it allowed me to actually create a 3D game. Even though I barely understood the code, I was able to set up a game, get characters moving around, and make some changes. I didn't get a lot accomplished, but it was really inspirational. Enough about my experience though, let's actually break down the differences between using a framework and using an engine and what that'll mean for you both as a developer and just learning along the way. And I'll pop up some pretty visual guides so you can follow along. All I ask is that you just uh, do what that thumbs up thing says and just hit the button or share the video. It does help a lot and I really appreciate it. All right, so first, when it comes to frameworks, you've got to remember that it's going to take quite a bit longer to get things done. When you've got a game engine, you get things like physics systems, rendering systems, terrain systems, and all of the core pieces that you need to deal with building a game. When you're using a framework, you're going to have a lot lower level access to things. You'll be able to control some rendering. Some, some systems might even have a full rendering pipeline built in. You'll have some access to input control, and that may vary, but you're probably not going to have a physics system built in. You're probably not going to have a terrain system, an animation system, a full-fledged sound system, or any of those other things. So you're going to need to build whichever ones of those actually apply to your game. Now, that can be handy though, because that's a useful set of skills to learn, and some companies need those skills, and we'll talk a bit more about that along the way. But if you just want to get a game done, it's going to be much, much faster to use a game engine. If you want to learn how a game engine is put together and what the core pieces are, then using a framework will kind of get you there. At least it'll get you to the point where you're trying to figure that out. Whether or not you make it all the way to building a game engine, well... We'll see. The next big difference is language availability. When it comes to frameworks, there's a framework to make games using just about every language. There's Python ones, JavaScript, Ruby, PHP. I bet there's probably one for any language that you can think of. When it comes to game engines, though, you're really limited to just a couple big players. Unreal and Unity are the top two, and they leave you with the options of C++ for Unreal or C Sharp for Unity. Now, both of these are useful languages. They're great, powerful languages that can do quite a bit, and that's kind of why they're chosen. But there's not a lot of uh, extra selection or a lot of availability of other options. And I know that that can deter some people who really like a specific language and want to learn game development in that language. Now let's talk about another language, the language of math. And this is one where I think frameworks might have a harder time. And this is because when you learn framework development or you learn to make games using frameworks, you actually really need to understand a good amount of math. You're going to be doing a lot of math, calculating things for your rendering, for your cameras, for your physics, and just about everything else. You're also going to need to worry a lot more about performance and optimizing things because when you use an engine, a lot of that optimization and performance work is already done, wrapped up and kind of hidden between simple little method calls or not between them, but behind simple little method calls that make it easy for you to access and easier for you to use things. So if you love math, then frameworks may just be the perfect option for you because you'll get to use those math skills all the time, kind of exercise that math brain and really get into it. And if you hate math, then it might be something that you really struggle with and may want to push you kind of towards using a game engine instead. Let's talk a little bit about that hiding though, because when a game engine hides that deeper functionality, that low level stuff from you and wraps it all up into a nice neat method call or into a pre-built system, there are some drawbacks. You really just won't understand exactly how that system works. You may have a harder time extending out that system or expanding on it or even using the system properly. That doesn't mean that you need to build every single system before you can use it properly but it does give you a little bit of an extra bonus or benefit or just some knowledge of understanding how different systems work if you've built them yourself. It doesn't necessarily mean that you need to start that way though. So if you're thinking about it from a beginning point, the real benefit here is that you'll understand a little bit more of how things work, but it will take you quite a bit longer because you're gonna need to build the very basic versions of how those work. And then if you wanna switch over to using an engine, you'll be using just a much more advanced version that was built by a team of people using that thing or building that thing over many years. So there's a lot of value there in the understanding, but it may or may not apply to your day-to-day -day job depending on what you're gonna do. 
Let's finish this by comparing job prospects because that's probably the thing that people care about most. So if you're a framework developer, you work with frameworks and you learn a lot of frameworks, to be honest, there really probably aren't nearly as many job openings available. I actually did a quick search this morning to see what was available in the game development community and everything except for one job posting either requested Unreal or Unity experience. And that's because that's where most game dev jobs are. Most game engines are already built or they're built and managed and maintained by big teams. I don't know the size of all of them, but I know that Epic and Unity have giant teams alone and every game company that I've been at had some engine team that was dedicated just to working on engine related stuff. And even the bad game engines, the ones that you think are terrible and hate, those probably have a lot more than one developer working on them. So that's why there's just not a lot of work available to do that kind of stuff. There's demand for it, but it's very focused demand. So if you like that kind of stuff and you really want to get into it, it's cool, it's interesting, but just expect that there aren't a whole lot of, or at least a, a whole wide array of options out there for where you can use those skills. Of course, you can use those skills doing other game development stuff, and they definitely apply, but doing actual engine development, there aren't too many places that I know of, at least, that still do that actively on their own. Most of it is somewhat outsourced. When you're working with a game engine, though, if you've got Unity or Unreal experience, and you can show that, and you're able to just jump right into the project, it makes it a lot easier to get hired and just get past the HR process, get through the whole hiring process. So if if you're looking to just be a game developer making games, again, I'd still recommend that you go with a game engine. If you really want to be an engine developer, you really want to understand the lower level stuff and the deeper understanding of how things work for the knowledge or just because that's the kind of thing that you want to work on, then go that route. But either way, remember to hit the thumbs up button and let me know if you have any other suggestions or just other frameworks or things or just comments down below. I guess just say whatever you want down below and I'll try to reply and say hi. All right, thanks again. I'll see you later. Also, don't forget to check out Millinote. Get started organizing all of your projects completely for free by simply clicking the link in the description.